I think we can uh, imagine what it is that motivates people around us. We've been told for hundreds of years that the sort of primary motivators of human behavior are pain and pleasure. We go away from pain, we go towards pleasure, and essentially we try to earn money to make this easier. I can buy myself a nicer house, which is more pleasurable, avoid all sorts of uh, nasty things by going to the doctor and having them help me. And when we look around at other people's behavior, we think this is what drives their behavior. But as we've looked at the brain, myself and other colleagues around the world, what we see is that there's a deeply embedded set of motivations, not just to sort of selfishly focus on our own pain and pleasure, but to be aware and engaged with other people. And this is an end in itself. It's not just a way to get more stuff for ourselves. We're wired to be social. Uh, we're wired such that our brain feels pain and pleasure based on what's going on socially in our lives. And I think that this changes the way we make sense of other people and ourselves. And in the book, I describe three of what I think of as social superpowers, three ways in which our brain is designed to connect us more to the social world, more than we might have guessed. And if we really understand these social superpowers, I think that it can lead us to make our lives better, to make our schools better, and to make all the organizations that we participate in on a daily basis better places to work and places that are more productive and successful. So I think there's a lot to sort of be taken from uh, what we're learning about the brain and the way it makes us profoundly social in unexpected ways.